All right, I need to do a uh, preview of the game this week. Anybody know who West Virginia's playing? All right. I am sometimes, or often, clueless, <laughs> but I'm not that clueless. West Virginia heads just a bit north because that's where they go to beat the crap out of Pitt. I'm going to take a look at what I think are the keys and questions. And, of course, I expect things to go rather well for WVU. Hey, I'm feeling good, so I'm going to be optimistic. <laughs> I do think West Virginia will win, just how, how well is the question. So, first thing up. Uh, update on Eddie Vesterinen. I, nothing definite, but uh, there is a rumor going around that uh, it's going to be an extended, uh, perhaps all season uh, issue. So uh, we're <laughs> we'll wait and hear something official. Maybe we'll find out in the Kegler show tonight. Meanwhile, I gotta remember. I gotta remember to set my alarm to catch the Kegler show tonight. Uh, now, how you, missing Eddie? Hey, whether it's a week, two weeks, or a season, it's going to make a difference. But we do have guys who can, you know, handle it. I mean, T.J. Jackson, Asani Redwood, uh, maybe Flip Martin over. Uh, They'll, they'll find the guys, and the guys will find the ball. Now, this is WVU football going deep. I try to take a look at more than just the numbers, more than just the fears. I try to go deep. Hey, with my weight, going deep can take a while. <laughs> uh, the line will have to give the quarterback about 20 seconds or so for me to get downfield. All right. Anyway, I am Forrest Poston. I guess I am feeling a little sillier than usual, usual today. I uh, hope you'll deal with it. Please share, subscribe, uh, tell your friends, make comments, click the thumbs up button and click the notification bell. Last check, I'm still sitting at 81 subscribers short of the 500 mark, and the 500 mark is where I can start to do some things that will help me uh, pay a little bit on the bills, buy a little cat food, and maybe sneak a little RC or Dr. Pepper into the house once in a while. Uh, contraband around here. Now, all, I'm going to start where probably expect me to start. I'm not going to save it for last and just try to drag it out and hold you in the video. Defense. I'm going to start with pass defense. I think the defensive backs will be better. But it's going to require improved communication. Uh, we had times where it, it looked like the corner and safety did not agree on the coverage. Corner expecting help, safety gone someplace else. Who was right, who was wrong, I do not know. But it doesn't matter. The result is the same, and we got to clean that up. Uh, plus, you know, maybe... a. A little bit slow, the mind a little bit someplace else. You know, did the video. I think maybe some of these guys are thinking too much about, you know, being the next Beanie Bishop and forgetting that you first you do your job, and if you do it well, you become the next Beanie Bishop. I uh, hope that will be cleared up and just the nature of the rivalry may be enough to you know, push past a lot of that. 
unless guys are just feeling like they have to do extra because it's a rivalry, and that kills things too. Do your job, do your job. We've got defensive backs who can do their job. It is not a talent or skill issue. It is in the head. <laughs> so, and these guys, generally speaking, these guys have proven they can play. They can play in big games. We just got to get past whatever glitch has slowed things down. And linebackers are included in that. Linebackers, spear, spur, uh, those guys are not getting to their deep drops when they were supposed to. And that also made the safeties and corners look worse. Related to that, pass rush. Now, there wasn't a lot of rush on the Albany quarterback because they weren't trying to do a lot of blitzing. They did get some pressure. Pressure isn't really the problem. Yeah, they didn't get it enough there, but they can get pressure when they want to. The problem is containing the quarterback. They haven't done that either game. Now, against Albany, they sometimes had him on the run enough, and we had coverage, you know, good enough. The quarterback was forced to throw the ball away before he hit the sideline. But way too often, the quarterback just had that open side to go to, moved out of the pocket, hit a big play downfield. And that includes the Penn State game and the Albany game. If one guy comes in, either he gets the quarterback or you have to have containment that gets the quarterback. He has to feel pressured or go down. <laughs> and I don't know why we haven't done that, but I do know things will be opened up a little bit more. Um will be a little more exotic with the, you know, with the rushes, with the blitzes. I think we'll see Burks coming uh, on more blitzes. Can't do it too often, but I think we'll do it more than we did against Albany. Uh, and hopefully that will result in containment. We'll see. But containment has been more of a problem than just pressure. Uh, the pit running game, the running back named Reed, and people keep saying he's a lot like Jaheim White. Well, if he's like Jaheim White, the defense should be ready for him because every day they practice against Jaheim White. Now, does that mean that practicing against Reed will have pit ready for White? Could be. Uh, maybe they know how to deal with a back of this type. But is one of them significantly better than the other? Is Reed like Jaheim White, but White is <laughs> better? Yeah. Then Pitt won't be ready. And if they are, well, there's a guy named Donaldson uh, who has a rather good history against Pitt uh, in terms of yardage. So I'm not worried too much about the running game, but I do think that uh, yeah, playing against Jaheim White should have the defense ready to deal with the like Jaheim White backs. Uh, Pitt this year is playing up-tempo, very up-tempo. You beat up-tempo, of course, partly by playing good defense, but got, it's, it's particularly important to keep them off their schedule. Don't give them more than two yards on first down. Tackle for loss on first down is excellent. Keep them behind the chains. 
force them to change their tempo. Uh, I think we've got the defense to do it. But uh, knowing you need to do it, being able to do it, and actually doing it are different things. Which is why we'll be tuned in to watch the game on Saturday <laughs> instead of watching one of these stupid computer-generated simulations. I don't care which team the simulation has winning. I hate those things. They are so ignorant. Uh, now, <laughs> offense. Offense. We got an offense. Uh, there is no question about that. Can we run up the middle? Inside tackle. That's still a question. I never expected to be Yates as to be as strong a run blocker uh, up the middle as Frazier. Uh, Yates may be better at pulling and you know getting outside to help with the outside zone reads and that sort of thing. But we do need to be able to run up the middle. If teams are just wondering which direction we're going to run outside, that narrows things down too much. And while we're talking about the middle, Albany did get that one clean blitz right up the middle. Now, one coach uh, said it was a miscommunication by the center. Another coach said it was a you know, pass protection missed by the running back. And it, I think it was probably both of those. But we got to clean that up. We cannot have the middle opening up. Now, it was only once against Albany. But i got to figure Pitt will try to take advantage of that. They will test Yates. Yates and Hubbard. If there is a weakness on the line, still have to think that's it. Don't think it's a special weakness, but we do need to improve up the middle. Uh, now, I do, you know, uh, the touchdown run by Green did start up the middle. So, uh, and you know, most quarterback draws do. Will Jaheim White have a strong, positive response to his fumble. He didn't get to play a lot afterwards. He did okay when he played. But how will he come out against Pitt? Can't be tentative. Can't be mad about whatever he had to do in practice. Uh, you know, if the coaches made him do extra ball security work, and I expect they did, uh, he can't, and he can't just, he can't worry about the fumble. He has to forget it, but before he forgets it, he has to learn from it. So hopefully he learned from it this week, has since forgotten it, and will just play like Jaheim White. Uh, while we're on running backs... We didn't see Jalen Anderson against Albany. We saw Dunbar. It's only one, uh, one drive. I suspect they just wanted to see Dunbar. They know what they've got in Anderson. But it is possible that Dunbar has passed Anderson. I expect him to do so sometime this season. Uh, Anderson has supposedly improved this year started to be better about fulfilling that early promise. I'm just not convinced. He's had so many years. Now it's, it's show me, dude. Um, unless you consistently you know, do very well, I'm not convinced. And that makes him vulnerable. Dunbar is a back who could be as good as Donaldson or White. Uh, 
So I am curious if we see a third back, who will it be? Will it be Dunbar passing Anderson? Will it be Anderson getting another chance to prove that he is more than just okay? Uh, even for a third back in this game, this conference, uh, this level, okay isn't good enough, especially when you've been around as long as Anderson has. Uh, Garrett Green. Got to talk about Garrett Green. Uh, of course, he sucked rocks against Penn State. Albany, he was as sharp as you can get. couple of mistakes. We're not asking for perfection. He was sharp, short, intermediate, and long most of the time. That's what he needs to do. That's what he worked on. That's what we hoped for. It was one game against a weaker opponent. Can he do it and will he do it against a very good opponent like Pitt in a big game? I think he will. I think he'll also be better about making the run decisions than he was in the Penn State game. I don't think he's going to run as much this year as he did last year. But if teams play man coverage, they're good in coverage, and that field opens up, he's got to run. And that's what man coverage does, <coughs> potentially. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I mean, uh, any given day, Garrett Green can have a massive game. Uh, of course, that's true of the whole team now. Uh, oh, shoot, I don't remember which uh, one of the player interviews was talking about how explosive the team is. And he's like, come on, you know, even though the linemen are athletes, you know, they may grab the ball and go at some point. Yeah. To whatever degree they can. Uh, but Green needs to be varied in terms of where he passes, in terms of when he passes or runs or hands off, and he has to be consistent. We can't have streaks. Missing something here and there, a mistake, that's okay. Having three good passes and three mistakes, now that, you know, of course that hasn't been Green's style, that was Daniel's. Um, but if Green plays consistently well with, you know, those, the completion percentage in the 60% plus, and he was over 70% last week, then West Virginia probably wins if the defense is just so-so. Will that all come together? And I know, you know, I didn't talk about the receivers. Oddly enough, it's because I don't think there's an individual big story. I expect the receivers to be good. I expect the ball to be spread among five to seven receivers, just like last week. I think that's what we will typically see. If, you know, six receivers have 50 yards and nobody has over 50 yards, that's still a 300-yard passing game. And that is fine with me. I do not need a 100-yard receiver if we have consistent receiving. All right. I think that covers most of what I had in mind. Of course, there are, you know, you can talk about any given player, any given part, you well, know, or special teams I didn't cover. Uh, well, we're still waiting to see a lot of that. Uh, I will say kickoff re return coverage has been good. I like how Brand Brown handles that. Uh, on a punt, if it goes into the end zone for a touchback, we're mad. You're trying to, you know, 
get them as far back as possible. Why should it be any different on kickoff returns? Try to get them pushed back as far as you can. I like the idea. Now, I do hope we see better punt and kick returns for West Virginia, not against them. Uh, but we haven't seen a lot going on with special teams yet. Maybe this is the week. Okay, thanks for dropping in. Uh, I will be doing a post-game show live. Uh, let's see, game starts at 3.30, so uh, well, we're looking at about 6.45 probably before starting. Um, barring weather delays, I haven't checked the weather report. Um, and then, of course, on Sunday, I will do a more in-depth look at the game based on having time to think about it and having watched the coaches and players in their post-game interviews. Thanks a lot. Please try to get me to that 500 mark on the subscribers, and I'll see you guys later. So long.